Hello and welcome to this segment of A Spirited Debate. I'm Lauren Green. Well, scientists this week announced huge findings regarding the beginning of the universe, the Big Bang. They found the first images of what's called gravitational waves or ripples, leading them to conclude that it shows evidence of not just one, but many universes, the multiverse theory. But Dr. William Lane Craig says these findings only confirm a biblical worldview of how the world began, a view that begins with a grand designer, God. Dr. Craig is the research professor of philosophy at the Talbot School of Philosophy and founder of reasonablefaith.org, and he joins me now from Atlanta. Welcome. Thank you, Lauren. Good to be with you again. Well, uh, the, it's called the BICEP2 collaborators. These are the scientists who actually made the discovery. Explain to us in layman's terms what they actually discovered. Well, let me try to set the stage for understanding this discovery. When astronomers look out at the universe around us, they see that the universe is pervaded with a background of microwave radiation. This is the same kind of radiation that is uh, in your microwave oven at home. And the question arises, where does this microwave radiation background come from? Well, it is a vestige that is left over from a very hot and very dense state of the early universe. And we cannot look back any further in time than the time that this uh, radiation background was produced. It is like a screen that covers whatever went before. But even though we can't look behind the screen to see what happened before, what happened before leaves imprints on that screen. Mm -hmm. So that by looking at the patterns of these imprints on the screen, astronomers can infer what went on behind or before <laughs> that screen. And what they have discovered uh, in these um, observations uh, at the South Pole is that there is a pattern in the microwave background radiation that is not simply produced by fluctuations in the density of the, the radiation that eventually caused galaxies and stars, but there are a sort of swirl, swirling pattern, uh, swirls throughout this radiation background. And this is best explained by a very odd phenomenon predicted by the general theory of relativity called gravitational waves. Wow. That is to say, when different objects are accelerated relative to each other, it causes ripples in space-time, these so-called gravitational waves. And these have produced or left their imprint on the microwave background radiation. Wow. And the question then is, well, what produced these gravitational waves? And the theory is that these are the result of a super rapid or inflationary expansion of the very early universe. During just, which just, like, a, just, like, just like when there's an explosion and the initial explosive moment, th th there is a lot of speed. Yes, that's right. And extremely rapid expansion. The universe in an incomprehensibly tiny fraction of a section went from the size of a subatomic particle to around the size of a grapefruit. And then after that it began the more leisurely expansion that we observe today. So, so what how this is evidence this, So how is this? How does this fit with the Bible's account of how the world began? How does this fit in with a biblical worldview? The evidence for the early inflationary year of the universe is of a piece with the, uh, what has come to be the standard Big Bang cosmological model today. Namely, that the universe is not infinite in the past, but it had an absolute beginning a finite time ago. And this inflationary era was one of the earliest periods just after that initial beginning. And in fact, there are um, theorems in contemporary science that have been discovered within just the last decade or so which show that any inflating universe cannot be past eternal but had to have had an absolute beginning. There has to be a past space-time boundary. So this discovery fits right in with the notion that the universe is not past eternal but rather had a beginning 
was brought into existence a finite time ago. You know, it's very interesting. Um, the uh, you know Andrew Parker, who wrote the book The uh, Genesis Enigma, basically says it's really amazing that Genesis gets the sequence right, and it shouldn't. I mean, why is it that Genesis, even though you don't, if you don't agree on seven days or, or you know, at 24 hours in a day or how long the universe is, for some reason there's a very interesting. What they're looking at is that the Genesis actually gets the sequence of creation correct. Is that what I'm understanding? Yes, yes the, it, it, the Bible begins with the words, in the beginning, God mm -hmm. created the heavens and the earth. And the words, the heavens and the earth, is a Hebrew idiom for the universe. In the beginning, God created the universe. And this Jewish account of creation is utterly different from anything else that you find in antiquity, whether in um, Greco-Roman uh, thought, uh, which thought that the universe and matter is eternal, or in pagan mythology, which always thought that there was some kind of primordial stuff out of which the universe was made. The idea that there was an absolute beginning uh, in which, at which God created the universe from nothing at all, just brought it into being, is unique to, to Judaism in the ancient world. What is this multiverse scenario, and what does it matter if there are multiverses, multi-universes, or one universe? What does it matter? Well, f now, theologically speaking, I would say it doesn't matter a whit. Uh, if one believes in a transcendent creator of the universe who is uh, omnipotent, uh, he could certainly create as many universes as he wanted. So the idea that this is the only universe that there is is not something that is a presupposition of, of theology. Uh, theology is open to the idea of a multiverse. But I think that the multiverse hypothesis becomes significant in that some persons who want to avoid the inference to a creator and designer of the universe will appeal to the multiverse as a sort of metaphysical alternative to a creator and designer. And in that respect, it can become very significant if you're arguing philosophically for the existence of a creator and designer of the universe. You've got to deal with the multiverse alternative. I could talk to you all afternoon, but we've ran out of time. Dr. Craig, thank you so much. And uh, if you want to check out more about this topic, about this latest find, uh, you want to check out uh, reason, uh, reasonablefaith.org. Um, and uh, Dr. William Lane Craig, uh, you, you are so not a philosopher, only you were a scientist and a mathematician and all those things that uh, I probably broke out in a cold sweat uh, with. <laughs> well, you're very kind, Lauren. Thank <laughs> you very much for being on A Spirited Debate.